Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Judy Glova, and today is day five of the Burnout Solution Series, and I've collected some of the best experts for you to teach you about how to have your own burnout solution. I'm so excited because today is all about affluence, living a life with more meaning and purpose, and having a successful career to boot. So I want to remind you that we are meeting every day throughout this online series in our Facebook group called the More Than Enough Women's Circle. I'll be live in the evening, so don't miss this daily recap and the highlights. Plus, I'll be there to answer any questions because I really want to make sure that you can take actions on the tools and skills that you learn each day. So if you haven't already, head on over to the More Than Enough Women's Circle. Now, before we kick off, I want to introduce our guest, Robert Clancy. Robert is a creative visionary, a number one international best-selling author, spiritual teacher, and co-founder of Spiral Design Studio. At age 19, Robert had a divine spiritual experience that altered his life in profound ways. In 2012, he created the Guide to the Soul and a fan book page on Facebook where he shares his divinely inspired thoughts, now followed by over 700,000 people worldwide. He is a sought after speaker, presenter, and guest. He also is a regular contributor and weekly guest on Los Angeles KABC Radio Syndicate, Late Night Health Radio Show, He's also a co-host and producer of the Mindset Reset TV show, which airs in over 160 countries. Now, today, our focus is going to be on breaking the habit of procrastination, using mind, body, and soul to up-level your business. So, Robert, hi, how are you? I'm doing really well, and yourself? I'm doing great, and I, I, I have to let our audience know that you know you and I have been friends for a couple of years, and I just adore what you do. I'm, I'm so amazed by all that you get done, and I love our topic today because if anybody suffers from procrastination, I mean, you are definitely at the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> so I want to ask you, our first question is, um, what do you think is the reason why we have so much overwhelm and burnout. And I wanna ask it from two perspectives. One perspective is you as the professional business person and CEO, and then the other as you know, you are a spiritual thought leader. So can you answer it in two ways? <laughs> sure, yeah, there's you know, a lot of things that you have these blocks. And what I found is when you get overwhelmed, it's, you're just, it's an organization issue. And when you write things down, you bring it into, uh, and using your mind, body, spirit is bringing it to manifestation. And I actually uh, read, heard that um, uh, Sir Richard Branson, so head of Virgin, he actually takes his goals and writes them down on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. He has to have it in a physical form. And once you do that, you can kind of organize. And the second part of it is prioritizing what is important, what do you need to get to? And, you know, I know they talk about lists and my wife's a classic at making them. These little post-it notes and she has little check boxes on there, but that's how we get everything done. We go through that list and, and really focus on it. And the second part is fear and that's on the spiritual side. Mm. And what I find quite often is that you are afraid of stepping into your own light and your own greatness. And that is the big aha moment that's the mm. <laughs> that's the the thousand foot level of everything and think about where you hold yourself back because you don't think you're worthy of doing x or being x or doing this or going here with what you have and i certainly wouldn't have written books i mean that was my main stumbling block i hated english class and i've i've got four four books um and and they're best sellers <laughs> so wow i had put myself in the place where you can't write this and what do you have to say in the world? Those books would not be published. I wouldn't have half of the success that I've had in getting this beautiful message out and helping other people. 
Wow. Well, I don't want to over, I don't want to oversimplify what you're saying, but um, you know, it sounds like, yeah, it's like the being able to be conscious and whether it's writing it down on a post-it note and just making sure right. that you're conscious of what it is, right? Being really mindful. And then the other part is really being able to look at what your fears are because right. yeah, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. You know, if you weren't good in English class and then you're writing four books, like how did that happen? I can just, <laughs> I can only imagine, you know, what kind of internal blocks came up for you. And why don't yeah. you tell us a little bit about, because again, I'm, I'm sure you had them. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about how did you walk through that process of, okay, here's the fear. I'm, I have this story that I'm not good at English or, you know, I wasn't good in English in high school. <laughs> you know, and I want to write a book. Like, how did that happen? Well, I, I started, first thing was you need to start. So I started by writing it down and I was on an airplane. Somebody had encouraged me. They said, you have these beautiful stories. You should write a book. I thought mm -hmm. this is going to be overwhelming. How am I going to get through this? And I, I broke things down, you know, by if I do each chapter and have a concept and then have three main areas that maybe you're going to work in. And then if you have seven chapters in each, there's 21 chapters. So it's, it, it's, you know, when you break the math down, it starts working that way. The other part was I looked at art. Art is what you, you create and how you approach it. So if Jackson Pollock can splatter paint on a canvas and there's art and people find beauty in that, I can certainly splatter some words on a page and yeah, I, I'm smart enough to know that <laughs> grammar is not married to grandpa, but <laughs> I then figured somebody will, will figure that out. You know, I'll get an editor, they'll correct things and guide it. And the third part is, uh, comes from my martial arts background that, um, I, you know, as one martial artist, a grandmaster once uh, was up in front of the room and he said, how many of you are really good swimmers? Put your hands up. You know, several people put it up and he goes, keep your hand up if you are a strong swimmer. Then keep your hand up if you are an expert swimmer and you think you're one of the best. And the hands were still up. And he said, okay, how many of you are in the Olympics? And the hands went down. <laughs> he said, well, you just said you were expert swimmers. Why aren't you in the Olympics doing swimming? And he said, one of the fundamental things is practice. And that's how you get there. You just keep working at it and um, by practicing every day. So, you know, I have some students come in and I'll get the comment, you know, I'll show them some technique and they'll say, yeah, I, I know that one. I'm like, yeah, I know you know it. Do you think swimmers know how to swim that are in the Olympics? Do they still have to work at it? And then the, the light bulb goes on. Mm -hmm. It's practice and it's, it's keep doing that. And I can look back at my writing from 2008 to now, 10 years later, and it's improved. And that was through just exercising every day in words. And I've had people come up to me and say, you just write so beautifully. And I'm still that white belt. I'm still, you know, working <laughs> forward. And those things happen. And even in martial arts, you don't really realize when you're, when you're there. And that's the beauty of it. Mm. Well, I kind of want to go through some of the, because I take notes when you're talking. And one of the <laughs> things that um, you said is that you started with someone telling you that you right. should write all your stories down. So that's kind of like starting with inspiration. Yes. So I want to remind people like, you know, you need to know your why and, and your inspiration. But then you also said that you broke it down, right? If you can't look at something so huge, because of course, that's going to scare us, right? Right. And then you said that, you, you wanted to just start. And yes. you, you said, you know, if, if Pollock could splatter paint, <laughs> you know, and call it art, well, you could also engage other people to help you. And right. that was, that's another piece that I really want people to hear because, you know, women out there, sometimes they limit themselves because they don't want to let other people know that they have weaknesses or maybe they, that they might look silly or foolish. Um, you know, Again, I'm a recovering perfectionist, and I can yeah. say that there were times I didn't want to <laughs> know that I didn't know how to well, do it. Well, you brought up a couple of points. One is, is being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're raised to uh, you know, offer help to others. Mm -hmm. That's how we're all brought up. But you don't get that reciprocity unless you also accept it because you're yes. taking that away from somebody being able to give to you. And being vulnerable 
is probably the best way to be humble, to realize that, you know, you're, you're there. And the other part is recognizing your own greatness. It took someone to point that out into, in, in myself, but, um, also recognizing that within yourself for yourself. And when I wake up, uh, each day I have a routine that I, I smile before my feet hit the floor. Mm. And I smile when I'm alone because I realize I never am. And I mm. share that with myself first mm -hmm. and then bring that out to the world. It's the greatest tool that we carry with us. And it can actually change your mindset. And as you mentioned, I have the Mindset Reset Show. Mm -hmm. It's about changing perspective and looking at things in a whole new way. Mm -hmm. and when you can pull yourself back to that thousand foot level, that's when the magic happens. Mm -hmm. And I have a great example that I just want to share and then we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the next piece. But this is really how you can use this perspective as a tool. You know, you never see the great picture God paints for you because you're always standing on the canvas. You just have to trust that the image is beautiful. And when my mother was diagnosed with cancer, and this is a woman who smiled her entire life. She was a beautician. Mm -hmm. She not only made people look beautiful, she always made them feel beautiful with her smile. Mm -hmm. Cancer took her smile. Mm. And then shortly after that, um, she was diagnosed with dementia and her short term memory was gone. It was taken from her. And my sister then lost her smile because she started thinking she's not going to remember who we are. Well, long story short, looking at this in perspective and keeping that mindset, she forgot she had cancer. Oh, wow. And she lived. Every day after that, with a smile on her face, you'd ask her how she's doing. I feel great. And you know what? I know that had an effect on keeping her alive longer. So we had her with us longer. The other effect that happened was her long-term memory sharpened. So she was able to, to repeat over and over stories from my childhood oh. that I now have galvanized in my mind because anything would trigger her. The short-term memory was gone long-term memory would come in and she would tell you the same story. She forgot that she told you the story an hour earlier, two days earlier. Oh my gosh. So right. <laughs> two seconds story. earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, when you look at things in perspective, there's always a silver lining and that's kind of the key to getting through those things. Wow. Well, and I would tie, I want to tie two ideas together because what you had said before was, you know, related to your martial arts about, you know, not going into that place of I know, right. And being curious. And what right. the point is that you made, you know, with your, the story about your mom, it's like, yeah, imagine how much your mindset can impact you and what you focus on and what you remember and what you continue to remember about right. yourself. Right. Yeah. What is that? What is that type? you know, what is that story that you keep repeating and how is that impacting? Yeah. Yeah. And we all have, you know, the inner child that needs to be healed in some way. There's, there's, you know, uh, your self image. And I, I talked to a woman and I, I don't know, I just felt like, uh, you know, she's very attractive, but there was some reservation there and I could see that she had a self worth issue. And I, I said something to her and tears streamed down her cheek. Mm. And she just said, thank you for, for pointing that out. And, you know, it, we all carry this little black box inside that it's like Pandora's box or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. It's about releasing those things, getting past them and realizing your own greatness that you have and you can get there and you have everything that you need to be successful. And what I said to her was, how you see yourself in the mirror is not how everyone else sees you. It's not how your friends and family view you. They only see this beautiful essence that is you. Mm -hmm. and that's what you need to recognize when you start seeing your own face before you bring that out to the world and bring that smile because that's what you need. And that's what's going to get you to the, those next levels. Yes. And I love the point that you're making it because it's like the beauty is from the inside out, Right. And I also think in terms of a lot of our business women, oh, my dog wants to be a part of this interview. So she's going to say hello. She's going to make a cameo. Sorry. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is that when, when we're talking to business women, entrepreneurs, corporate, whatever, like we have to think about our brand, right? And the brand is what people think about us when we're not in the room. But right. I think to your point, it's what, what do we bring into the room? 
right? And it comes from that inside place of how do we see ourselves and how do we let it in? Because to your point, you had people in your life that said, hey, Robert, do you realize like you're really, a, you're really great at this? And you had to let that in. And I think for some of the women, women generally, and I could say this because I mean, I've talked to enough women about it, but most of the time when someone gives us a compliment, we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, there's not a lot of reception of it. And, you know, sometimes just stopping and realizing like maybe what they're seeing, I don't necessarily always see. And to your point, when I became a coach and I started, um, I was in this coaching program, people had to give us feedback and we had to actually learn to receive it. And it was so amazing how many blind spots I had about some of the talents I had. So to your point, I think I really want to just drive it home. It's like, how do you live from that place of knowing that, you know, other people see you and see your greatness? Yeah. Well, here's something that you can do if you have a partner. Mm -hmm. And I learned this from Gay Hendricks uh, from the Hendricks Institute. Uh, him and his wife uh, both have this beautiful about relationship therapy and, and things. And I tried it. Um, I was talking to him is about bringing creativity in relationships. But here's something you can do with your partner. You have these gratitude moments. And we've all talked about that. And there, that's out there. But have appreciation moments, too. And when you can share an appreciation for your partner, I did this um, after interviewing him and I went home and I, I said something to my wife. I said, yeah, I learned this, uh, you know, appreciation moment and I wanted to share what I appreciate about you. Uh, and she just looked at me and I said these things and she just melted. <laughs> it was just uh, instant. And I was like, I just got the key to the castle. <laughs> <laughs> I know what works. And, but I also thought we need to share those appreciation moments for ourselves too. You need to appreciate who you are because how can you bring love or appreciation to someone else if you don't have it for yourself first and that understanding that, you know, the greatness within is what we keep coming back to in this conversation and bringing that out to the world. And that's really the key to moving forward and getting to the, to the summit and getting those views that you need of your life. Yes. Oh my gosh. That, that hits, that hits my heart. As soon as you said it, I can see your wife melting like, Oh, and, and I do think to your point, you know, if we don't have someone else, we do have, you know, we can actually do that in the mirror. Like there's, right. I actually do. I was inspired um, by many of my mentors, but one of the ones that I was um, inspired by was this woman, um, Marissa Peer and her um, taught her talk about, um, how we have this epidemic of not being enough. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I heard her talk, she said, oh, write it on your mirror, I am enough. And then I said, you know what? But I'm more than enough. You know, it's like, you know, connecting yeah. to spirit and connecting to the, you know, to the divine light that we are. It's like, we're even more than enough. It's our mind that tells us that there's some kind of scale, some kind of like bar that we have to reach. And right. it's like, wow, we're limitless. And that's, that's another um, mentor of mine, uh, Dr. Uh, Hale Dwoskin, who talks about, you know, letting go of what you think you are and you are limitless. So I really, I really love, I love what you were talking about. And uh, can, it really does resonate. How can we appreciate ourselves and how can we connect to our divineness, our limitlessness? Um, right. Yeah, exactly. So here's the other thing. I happen to know that you have a very, very, very full life. I mean, I read your bio and that's not <laughs> even half of it. Like, <laughs> I mean, the amount of things that you accomplish. Um, tell me a little bit about like your perception of how you've been able to get so much done. Because again, you have your full-time business that you've been, that you've been running for a very long time, right? You have multiple organizations that you're on. You have, you know, TV, uh, online TV and radio appearances. Plus you write books. I mean, again, I'm just going, I'm just, again, scratching the surface of all that you do. How do you, I mean, Give us a little bit of an insight in terms of how, I mean, I know you do the sticky notes, <laughs> but how else do you get that done? Well, you know, the, I had people ask me, they said, you know, how, do you sleep? <laughs> you know, at night? And I said, 
yeah, I, I generally sleep about seven or eight hours and I have uh, time, you know, for family, for um, other, but I also combine things. So my volunteer work, if I want to spend time with my son, he became an Eagle Scout um, a year ago. And then there were other friends of his who were working on and he said, hey, I'm going to go down and help him out. And I went down with him or when he's going to go work out. Um, we'll go together or maybe, you know, we may not be working out together in the room, but the car ride over is, is time that we can spend. Um, the other is I, I organize my, my day. So I go in at seven and I leave at three and then between three and six, I do some of my spiritual work, writing, I'm working on a screenplay right now. There's just a lot of projects that are there, but I, I whittle it down and on my car ride home, I'll make you know, one or two key phone calls and touch base. Uh, when I come in the morning, I, I take care of all the email before I start. So it's, I have a routine and keeping everything organized. That's kind of the, the daily pieces that, that are there. The other is understanding that I can accomplish it. And one of the number one things that I have that most people that I've encountered that get stuck don't is I finish what I start. Mm. And that is probably the big epiphany because <laughs> uh, my wife pointed out, I didn't even realize that that was there until one day she said, oh, well, if he's working on it, it'll, it'll get done because uh, no matter what, I finish whatever it is. So if I'm going to, I took apart um, a computer, I was upgrading a processor and I disassembled the whole thing. Well, I'm not going to leave that for a week. I put it back together and it was working within an hour. Wow. I just reassemble it put it back and, and get it up and running. Wow. And I went and watched uh, a movie and then, you know, <laughs> hung out with my wife and yeah. went to dinner and there's, there's just times. And sometimes um, in there, one of the other keys is being spontaneous mm. and knowing when to shift gears and knowing when to, to change. And sometimes, you know, this is a priority life happens. You know, I had a very close friend, um, pass away this last week and was unexpectedly. And obviously there's a wake and a funeral and then reconnections with some people I hadn't seen in a while. And that was totally out of the blue. And now we're all going to get together. Some of the people I haven't seen that I used to work with in a restaurant years ago, there was like a whole team of us in, in the 80s and yeah. it's the 80 crew. And, um, you know, we're all still out there and, just wanted to reconnect. So there's those things that happen and you got to let life evolve around you as well. Mm, wow. Well, I want to, I want to point out to our audience, the fact that, you know, while you were talking, you did make connection. It's like you are, you're always trying to connect with others when you're getting things done. And like you said, you try to combine things, but you also have a routine. There is some structure. So, yes. you know, and I have also found in some of the clients that I work with, people who don't have structure, who basically let the day lead them and the mm -hmm. crisis lead them, they really do end up in so much stress and, and chaos. It's like, yeah. oh, I have to take a deep breath just thinking about it, you know, because it is. <laughs> well, it, I always have a, a good line when you're talking to somebody, it's your lack of planning is not my emergency. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I think as leaders and, you know, people that are running businesses and that have huge responsibilities, you have to be able to filter and to really stick to your boundaries because being, you know, a yes woman and saying yes all the time isn't necessarily going to help you or other people. And if you're not focused, it can really take you off your game to your point. I love that point about finish what you start right? How many times I can tell you how many times I have like five windows open on my, maybe even more open on my, my computer screen. And I notice that I'm flipping back and forth and back and forth. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Like now I set the timer for like 20 minutes and say, no, you're going to finish this in 20 minutes. And then you're going to go back because interruptions and stuff like that, they happen, but being able to focus and finish. Yeah. And to your point, I also make those lists and I check things off and I get like a little high as every time I check something off. Yeah. But yeah, being able and to. And it's also staying in the flow. It, it's uh, another martial arts principle is, um, and, and I loved how you opened the show because you talked about a circle. You have this circle for this group. Mm -hmm. 
And a circle is without beginning or end. It has infinite math and it has pi. And it's sort of the symbol of the universe, um, a halo or a circle on this globe. Oh, yeah. And I see the whole universe like this circle. And that's what you have around you. You have your own personal circle. Then you have your circle of your family, your mm -hmm. friends, your business circles, your extracurricular circles. Maybe you've got um, some sports circles or different things that you're connected to. And it's, it's moving through those. And in martial arts, we use circles to neutralize a problem and a problem being somebody threatening you. Mm -hmm. There's small circle jujitsu. What we do is the body is very linear. It loves, you know, the arm moves this way, but as soon as you twist the wrist like this, you're, you're going to go and follow that mm -hmm. to, to move away. And the other thing that I found is that the body moves away from pain. So I use that in my martial arts practice to when you apply pain that the attacker will move away because you're applying pain at them, they're going to move away from that like a magnet, you know, and you just put two mm -hmm. magnets together, it kind of repels it. And understanding that, but I also understand that when we see someone else in our circle who is in pain, we tend to repel away from that. And in martial arts, we follow the pain to where it is to take care of and eliminate it. So just sharing a kind word or a smile with somebody and understanding when you are in that, that you, um, you share that. My grandmother had a great uh, metaphor or a little phrase that worked around this. She said, when something good happens to you, and this is when I was a small child, she taught me this, hold it in for as long as you can because mm. you're just going to live on that energy. But if something bad happens, tell as many people as you can because a little piece of it will go with each of them. And I followed that through my life, just, you know, when be honest, be open about where things are and then allow that, you know, to percolate a little bit when you have something amazing and just hold that little high in there for a while. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, I love how your grandma, I mean, obviously your gr grandmother was a wise woman and it's like, yeah, infuse your body with it and, and yes. raise your energy level. And like that can help your set point, right? Like mm -hmm. where do you live? And the more of those times that we embrace it and we really let it resonate in our bodies. Yeah. It yeah. really it sticks. It sticks longer. Yeah. Um, I love that. And I also love, I love that circles and the circles of pain, you know, well looking at people with pain and, and looking at how you can, you know, help actually go toward people. And when I, when, when I think about pain too, it could even be a challenge in your business and how do you go toward the challenge as opposed mm -hmm. to avoiding it? Because hello, procrastination is all yeah. about let's avoid, the pain. <laughs> let's avoid that challenge that, well, that, yeah. that big, hairy, scary problem <laughs> or that, that really difficult client. Oh, let's, let's avoid them. Right. And it's also what you surround yourself with my, my dad, you know, that phrase that we've all heard, you know, birds of a feather flock together. Well, also what you surround yourself with, you become, and that's again within that circle and elevating yourself. If you're not in the right circles, it's okay to change. Sometimes they overlap and you need to move to a different circle to surround yourself with good people. And I'm in this beautiful uh, volunteer organization, the Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership. I've been, this is actually my 30th consecutive year volunteering with this. Um, I've worked with hundreds and thousands of youth um, and, and helping them uh, learn leadership service and le leadership through community service actually. And uh, there's just a beautiful group of volunteers. And now most of the volunteers are the people that have gone through the program. So now they're leading it. Oh. And I get to surround myself with something that I helped create. And it's oh just a beautiful uh, synergy of, you know, that they all remember if there's one thing that they remember, I'm the only volunteer in New York State that's been to all 30 seminars. So if they went to the seminar, I was there. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Talk about circles. Holy cow. That, that really does bring us full circle. And I, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> but I want, to, um, I want to ask you, if there's just one thing that businesswomen walk away with from our talk today you know, about how to break the cycle of procrastination, you know, with mind, body, and soul to up-level their business. Like, what is it that you really want them to remember? That you are worthy. Mm. 
you deserve your success and to realize that it's all within your hands. Whatever you're holding, you hold everything and the key to that and just go on and move up through that. Wow. Well, Robert, thank you so much. You're just so generous. Thank you for, for being generous with your time and also, you know, just supporting this whole program and as well as your free gift. So I do want to remind everybody that right below, click the link to Robert's free gift. And I also want to let you know that if you've already purchased your backstage pass, you also get his bonus uh, program as well. Plus, that's the no stress method, right? For this online series, because it's worry-free access. You don't have to miss anything and you don't have to wait. So this amazing deal, when you think about it, if you haven't gotten it already, it's another burnout solution. With that said, I just wanna leave you with this note. Instead of burning the candle at both ends, let your light burn brightly, knowing that you are more than enough. Most importantly, that you can create your own burnout solution and you don't have to do it alone. So I'll see you at the next awesome interview and I'll see you today in the Facebook group. Bye for now and thank you again, Robert. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. It's been a true pleasure to be here.